All right, guys. So, uh, welcome to your final rundown on your Walmart case study. Uh, but I hope you enjoy this whole thing, right? And every time you go to Kargil's and Kiel's and Satosa, I guess you see the world very differently right now. So, welcome to Walmart. Call it the world's grocer, world's largest Fortune 500 company. And here we are trying to grow this company and improve profitability. Two words that are part and parcel of a CEO's life. So what's happening right now, guys, is you're learning to think strategically. So some of the comments you are hearing from me uh, and our team on the work you do is to say, hey, the point you're making is more operational. Try to get to a more strategic level. What is strategic? Uh, the insights and the issues that are, in, that are impactful to a wider part of the company. So it's not about a little nut and a bolt or a shelf that is in the wrong place in a supermarket, but we are looking at more strategic issues. It's not about the color and the look of your website, but it's about how well it's integrated, how far it's personalized, what degree of cloud computing is behind that website so that it can grow stably and securely. So more you read about this, you will get your strategic brain working. And that's what's going to grow over the years. Uh, and you might be sitting down making big decisions, right? So I hope this slide stays with you even after this exercise. So this is our full list of audits. One or two missing. It's consciously missing because there are so many audits, guys. You can add, put in. You know clearly LOHA segmentation is not here. Because we keep it out for some of you who are capable to handle it to bring it in. Obviously, you don't take a choice between your six pages. What are your priorities? Some things are not an option. Pestel, mac macro, micro, FIFOs. I mean, those are fundamentals in any audit in, at any level, right? So those are obvious, but some conscious calls are to make that you don't miss. For example, your uncertainty analysis, VUCA audit cannot be missed. Uh, your value chain analysis cannot be missed because you know this is a manufacturing, sourcing, uh, selling type of company, right? Uh, your digital capability audit cannot be missed. You know that. Uh, your risk audit cannot be missed. You know that. Your vision, mission audit under strategic intent cannot be missed because you know that there is a question, right? So some of that is common sense that you cannot miss certain things. Now that most of you have put your analysis in, you are able to figure out, hey, is this a good idea or a bad idea type of thing? But um, uh, you will take some calls based on your recommendations in task two as well. If you think a reputation audit is critical because I generally do that all the time because you're going to suggest something on those lines, then you better have an audit along that, right? If you don't have a blood report, you can't go and give medicine for filaria or I don't know, dengue. So likewise, right? Be, be smart, guys, all right? Of course, you can ask for help. So you guys know for the sixth page, there's a detailed video. Support is there, so please use it. So to get up to speed, there are two slides, especially the ones who are not good at reading, doing background studies. Two videos to watch. One is about the future of retail. Now, do not bring all of this to the assignment, right? Because this is for your general knowledge to go get up to speed. From a local point of view, I guess uh, you've gone through these links. Uh, a very good transformation of retail is what Kiehl's did well before COVID, hats off. Lucky to them, they have uh, now Kiehl's fully operational under the new outlook, the transformation they went through. Interesting things to read about, the investments they've made. You got to look at this with the annual report to see how much they spent because there is a financial impact of all of that. So here's a local example to see some degree, but obviously online, they're almost a infant at the moment, slowly moving forward, trying to get that piece right. Here's the overall outlook, right, on the food and grocery. It's going to be a 13 trillion industry, and it's going to grow at 30%. So please understand this. So the world is 13 trillion. So a trillion is 1,000 billion is 1 trillion. So you can see the number of times, but still we are really big, right? From a world 
you can imagine how much market share we are having at the moment. So that's a big picture to understand. You can bring this all the time. Massive market. Second point that you have to be appreciative is Asia is going to be half of it. Can you believe it? You and I are part of Asia. Of course, India, China included. And now you understand why Sri Lanka is in such a strategic uh, position to make most out of this growing market in everything we do, right? With China and India, we are right at the edge of these two big 3 billion population. And that's going to be uh, growing at 42%, right? So while US, Europe is big, growth's going to come from Asia. And Asia is complicated, right? I hope you appreciate that. China and India, they both got a billion plus, but they're very different. One is a democracy, other one is autocracy, right? So you got to bring these in when you're doing market analysis. One country runs predominantly on a very rural economy and growth is slow, whereas China is propelling. On the other hand, in this business, 72% is food and, go food and grocery. We can't forget that across the world. Some markets almost 80% like India. So simplify this, right? Understand what this is all about. And in the biggest markets in the world, it's still convenience stores. 60% comes from small kades, small groceries, not from these fancy supermarkets, Cargill, Skills, Walmart, Carrefour, Tesco, etc. So get a good grip of this. Get realistic. When you all are going online and trying to do AI based stuff, try to understand where exactly you are going to play. Secondly, from there onwards, guys, I want you to focus on two things. One is on sustainability, other one is on e-commerce. I hope you make a note of that. Sustainability and e-commerce are going to spin this industry into different directions. So we got to address sustainability, we got to address e-commerce in your uncertainty discussions, in your strategic options, in your constraints. Because both of these have to be enablers. You got to address sustainability because the world is asking for sustainability and everything is going online, so e-commerce. So we got to bring these two in. Bring in that right up front of your assignment to say this is where the world is going is obviously a no-brainer right now. But how do you play there is the question. All right, I hope you got that picture. So let's, let me introduce you to a extra concept today, which I'm sure you've looked at from BCG point of view. I want you to consider GE metrics to understand this company a little bit more. Now, GE is an expanded version of BCG and tells you a couple of strategic options based on where your SBUs are. So if you look at mapping Walmart, they are in four, actually five. Uh, we could break down apparel also, food and grocery, health and west, wellness, tech and office, entertainment and the fifth is apparel. So look at uh, your industry attractiveness and look at your, your company's strength in each one of these and map it. And I hope you will be creative to map those. The size of the circle indicates how much of revenue each one will be bringing already. You know food and grocery is their largest. You have to make some assumptions on the others. If you already done it, great. The advanced version is what I'm showing you where you can make the sizes of the circles indicate how much it contributes. Of course, you have a similar model, guys, in your uh, country attractiveness. That is different. Huh? That is the country attractiveness. This is your company's SBUs or strategic business units. So something extra, uh, not that extra, it was held back until you have a sense of this company. So you are able to make some good recommendations. Now let's go to sustainability. When you get the version 1, 2.0, you will have a clean up version of this. Now, all of you know in our milestone analysis, we already have all the details of what Walmart has done 
to strengthen their sustainability agenda. I hope you are with me on that. That's on the milestone Excel sheet. You can filter it and take every single thing they've done since 1960 all the way to 2019-20. It's already there with you. This is what's happening in the world on research on sustainability on the left side. You also have in your assignment all what the companies done, the goals they have set, the carbon footprint they have reduced, uh, the organic work they have done, everything they have done is also there. So there are three pillars of knowledge through which you will and should be addressing sustainability in your assignment. Whatever the strategic option, we got to bring in sustainability because we the global trend towards sustainability. We have invested a lot and we are considering that to be a strength. And the third thing was what I forgot. I said three things. Okay, I hope you got it. <laughs> All right. So what you see on the right side is that are the tools that you would be looking at. And on the left side, some of the data. So there's a lot of data. So 80% of the consumer is saying uh, that they are, they are ready to change their purchase behavior. 67% uh, is concerned about scarcity. Uh, millennials are switching. Millennials are switching uh, to sustainable options. So that's a very important one. Uh, so there is a lot of data that is stacking up towards sustainability. But you have to appreciate this. This is generally in developed markets, all right? Mostly. Uh, but there's a lack of awareness. There's a lack of awareness of the truth. This point about a burger is more browner than an electric car being driven, right? So, uh, people are unaware. That is what this is all about. There's a lack of clarity. Lack of clarity. So, that creates an opportunity, right? That creates an opportunity. That creates an opportunity. So, there's a lack of clarity is an opportunity. Consumers are looking to go Sustainable is a O. This is the other big one I wanted to make a note of. 80% of companies are holding back their sustainability investments. Why? Because it costs you money to go solar. It costs you money to only take the organic vegetables because it costs you. So a lot of companies are holding back. So it's a constraint for other companies and we have advantage because we've already invested in it. So that's another justification how we could start winning there. So I hope you think through this. And then there's another interesting one. Most companies who have invested in sustainability have only invested 48% are on more labor policies. Sorry about the spellings in this. Very few are investing in sustainable tech, only 18%. So if you stack up this, companies and businesses, businesses are slow. But the consumer is definitely going green. Definitely going sustainable. They are concerned about plastics. They are concerned about packaging. They are concerned about how it's transported. They are concerned about the ingredients in it. They want it natural. They want it fresh. And that's a growth trend. Look at Sri Lanka, right? I mean, we are supposed to be worrying about We are having a battle regarding organic, right? So, uh, so I guess that's a valuable point. I will open up the conversation for it. So for you to use. So what are the models for this? The LOHA segmentation to understand the consumer behavior and map it in your segmentation. You have to segment the consumer, right? Uh, you have the triple bottom line, so you can review what they've done, which we've already discussed, and then make some, bring that into your suggestions. This is called the LCA, which is 
introduce you today life cycle analysis life cycle analysis from growing production manufacturing packaging transporting how the overall life cycle has and should get greener with regard to uh, what um, walmart is also doing so you could bring that concept in and you could use that also as an analytical tool in your six pages the ones who are now a little ahead of the game otherwise if you already tried to figure out what is happening in my life and i'm about to jump out of a building don't try these out right without these also you can still manage to pass but this is the real game okay so loha's consumer segmentation what's the overall people planet profit and overall life cycle today how do you recycle half of the polythene plastic wrapping that is going into the market because of grocery shopping and then with that you could bring a cost related marketing approach like what keels is doing for all the wasted plastics and stuff so so that's the game plan but the whole point is by doing this it should drive growth or profitability it should drive growth or profitability so that's the piece for you to think through when the slide deck also comes you'll have some support and we'll talk about it in a minute right if uh, if customers do different types of behaviors and become greener will that help the supermarket to reduce their cost will that help the supermarket to reduce their cost okay will that help the supermarket to increase their revenue because the customers will pay you x percentage more because you are greener so every one who walks in your basket value goes higher as you see if the loha segment comes in they pay more for greener products but how big is that segment how much would they pay type of conversation is what we will have to bring to the table so we'll come back to this in a little while guys right